Hello there, my fellow volunteered pilots, and welcome back to another episode of Battletech Lore. Today we shall continue our learning on the clan's infamous Protomax. Previously we talked about what these things are, what their purpose is, and how they came into existence. I also promised I would return to the topic and describe their models, and so here we are today. To begin with, I wanted to talk about the first generation Protomech designs, and namely six of them for today. The Harpy, the Siren, the Satyr, the Centaur, the Hydra, and the Rock. Not the Rock as in stone, but the Rock as in the mythological bird. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The first one for today is the Harpy. And I picked this one because the Harpy is also the very first Protomech ever made. Intended as a proof of concept more than an actual fighting unit, the Harpy does not outperform even a standard elemental battle armor in most regards. The only real advantage it offered over the battle armor was the top speed and the size. Because of that it was quickly relegated to anti-infantry work. As a proof of concept however, the Harpy did demonstrate that the Protomech, with a bit of improvement, could become a very good weapon. After the destruction of the Clan Smoke Jaguar, initially just Clan Hell's Horses and Clan Starbather adopted the Harpy for their use, joined later by the Clan Jade Falcon and Clan Fire Mandrill. The Harpy mounts just one machine gun as a main weapon, carrying 100 kilos of ammunition, limiting it to just a little over 3 minutes of continuous firing. However, it is capable of jumping up to 90 meters at a time, and can maintain a cruising speed of 32 kilometers an hour, which is quite adequate for hunting down infantry, if nothing else. Its light armoring is also enough to resist many infantry scale weapons although a medium laser hit will punch right through the torso. Its size can also be intimidating to troopers on the ground. The Harpy No. 2 was introduced in the 3060s, and it is a variant of the original given an extended range micro laser. To fit the weapon, armor protection was reduced even more. The Harpy 3 is an upgraded version, first spotted during the Jihad. This slightly speedier variant has a bit more armor protection, especially to its arms, legs and head. It is armed with a light machine gun with 1 ton of ammo. To increase the top speed to 80 km an hour, two of the jump jets were removed. Finally, the Harpy 4 is similar to the Harpy 3, retaining the earlier weapon while reducing the top speed to 50 km an hour. It did regain the jump jets and added mask equipment to give it brief bursts of speed. Armor protection was also reconfigured for the better. The second protomech of today is the Siren. The Siren was originally designed for Clan Smoke Jaguar to serve as a reconnaissance unit. Its high speed allowed it to rush forward, find the enemy, call in a missile strike, and evacuate without the enemy even seeing it most of the time. Given its light armor, its best defense is its mobility. As it was intended as a scout and an observer, it only carries a light machine gun in either arm, each one supplied with just 50 kilograms of ammunition. Its armoring was also kept light in order to achieve a cruising speed of 108 km an hour. Introduced in the 3060s, the Siren 2 was upgraded with regular machine guns. The Siren 3 was also introduced in the same period, this one armed with a pair of SRM-1 launchers, split between the Protomex 2 arms and a total of 100 reloads. To fit the large weapons, the speed was reduced to 120 km an hour. The Siren 4 was introduced in the torrential fighting of the Jihad, armed with a torso-mounted ER microlaser. In addition, this one has a mask as well, allowing it to reach speeds of up to 200 km an hour in short bursts. The Siren 5 was a bit slower than the Siren 4, but it was armed with a single AP Gauss rifle with one ton of ammo. 
the third protomech of today is the Satyr. Just like the Siren, this was designed to serve as a reconnaissance unit and a raider. To this end it was equipped with a fairly high speed and electronic detection gear. Offering only a bit more protection than the Harpy or the Siren, the best defense of the Satyr is to stay hidden from the enemy. It has one ER small laser, allowing it to inflict moderate damage on lighter enemies, while also freeing it from the logistical chain. It also has one light probe active in the torso, allowing it to easily find hidden units. Its 45 rated fusion engine propels it to a cruising speed of 76 km an hour. The Sator 2 was introduced once again in the 36 days, dropping the original weapons for increased mobility, armor and jump jets. Whatever weight there was left allowed it to mount one micro pulse laser in the torso. The Sator 3 retains the original's armor protection while adding jump jets for increased mobility. This one has one Streak SRM-2 launcher as the main weapon with one ton of ammo. The Sator 4 was developed during the Jihad. It improves upon the spotter role with the addition of a clan light tag. The only weapon is an AP Gauss rifle with one ton of ammo and a bit of extra armor. Protomech number 4 for today is the Centaur. This one is considered one of the best first generation protomechs, combining high speed, decent armor and a decent weapon mix. These features all combine to make it a flexible combatant, able to keep up with light mechs and supporting them. The SRM and LRM launchers provide much of the striking power of the Centaur, which then uses the ER micro laser to finish off an opponent which has been already damaged by the missiles. The only drawback to the Centaur's weapons is the lack of reloads for the missile systems. With only 10 reloads for the SRM-2 and 8 reloads for the LRM rack, a Centaur pilot will rapidly deplete his ammunition. The armoring of the Centaur is also light, with a single hit of a large laser destroying the thing utterly. The 45 rated fusion engine helps it maintain a good cruising speed of 65 km an hour. The Centaur 2 was developed during the 3060s once again, and it utilizes the newer technology of heavy laser. With some minor armor reduction, the variant is armed with an SRM-2 launcher in the torso. As the main gun, it holds a heavy small laser. The Centaur 3 drops all the previous weapons and a bit of armor for just one ER medium laser. Finally, the Centaur 4 is a Jihad era variant. It employs a mask for increased burst of speeds of up to 120 km an hour. The fifth protomech of today is the Hydra. This one was intended as a medium assault unit, carrying heavy armor and a decent weapon suite. Unfortunately, to get all the weapons and armor, the designers had to omit the jump jets and the larger engine that would have increased the Hydra speed. These limitations aside, it is overall a good general purpose protomech. As the main weapon, it has a Streak SRM-3 launcher, the ammunition efficiency with this weapon ensures that the pilot makes good use of the 10 reloads. If the rockets run dry, the Hydra does not remain helpless, switching to the torso mounted micro pulse laser. It also boasts enough armor to survive a direct hit from a PPC to the torso. Unfortunately, the 36 rated fusion engine can only propel the Hydra to a cruising speed of 43 km an hour. The Hydra 2 was introduced in 3066, centered around the use of a set of jump jets at the expense of some armor and weaponry. To accommodate the jets, the Hydra 2 carried just one Streak SRM-5 launcher with one ton of ammo. The Hydra 3 was designed in 3067 and it was made as a fire support protomech. It is armed just with one torso mounted LRM-6 launcher. It was also given a speed increase to 80 km an hour and a full set of jump jets. Hydra 4 is an anti-infantry battle armor design developed in 3072. It was given a significant armor boost for the role and armed with a couple of AP Gauss rifles 
one as the main gun and one in the torso. The paired Gauss rifles were given three tons of ammo to sustain itself in a fight. The final protomech of today is the ROC. By the time this was created, the engineers and the technicians had a lot of feedback from other units, and they were allowed to find a good balance of weaponry, armor, and speed. Thus, the ROC proved to be very popular with pilots, forming the backbone of many protomech units and stars. After its development by the Smoke Jaguars, the ROC was adopted by the clan Skyot, Goliath Scorpion, Hell's Horses, and Wolf in Exile. Others also adopted the ROC towards the later half of the 31st century. It was in the year 3069 that the ROC producing factory of the clan Steel Viper on Arcadia was taken by the forces of the clan Blood Spirit. By the time of the Dark Ages, only the Raven Alliance still fielded the original ROC design. The basic design carried a single ER medium laser and has enough jump jets to leap up to 150 meters at a time. It can also maintain a cruising speed of 54 kilometers an hour and enough armoring to survive a direct PPC to the chest. The ROC 2 was a newer variant developed out of the original, centering on the use of the then newly developed heavy laser technology. The main gun of the original was exchanged for a heavy medium laser, and to accommodate that one some armor had to be removed. The ROC 3 was developed at the same time as the ROC 2, but this one utilizes pulse laser technology. The main gun is exchanged for a medium pulse laser, with less armor reduction than the ROC 2 though. However, to achieve that, the jump jets had to go. Finally for today, the ROC 4 was specialized for use in the Jihad conflict. The variant dropping the heavier weaponry for some heavier armor and electronic warfare equipment. While it did retain the original jump jets, it is only fitted with an ECM suite and an AP Gauss rifle with two tons of ammo. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the first generation Protomex, well, six of them anyway, for today. Like I already said, there's more Protomech designs coming in a second and probably third video on the topic. There's another two designs from the first generation I'll also probably put in the third episode, as they didn't make it today. What about you though? Were you familiar with any of these models? Which one did you find the most interesting, or powerful, and why? Did you ever use these first generation Protomechs in your games? or fought against them? Do share your thoughts in the comments below if you want. If you found the episode informative or entertaining, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching and have a healthy and awesome day. This is GDN signing out.